Well, I've had it. I'm just going to go ahead and call the auctioneer and get rid of it all. Just move away. Welcome back. If you haven't seen my videos before, I'm Ross the Oliver Man. As if you couldn't tell from this ordeal here. So what am I doing? Is the question that people have been asking as they drive by and then call me on my cell phone to see if I've lost my marbles. Which I did that a long time ago. But anyway, what this is, there was supposed to be a tractor drive on this very day and one of the stops we were going to make was coming here take a rest and they could look at some stuff so i drug all of this out of the shed this is not even half of what i have i figured out once i went back and started counting so it was all set to go and then this morning i got a phone call about maybe 7 a.m or so the ride was supposed to start at 9 and you could hear outside it was thundering and lightning and pouring rain and i pretty well figured that was going to happen it was a 90 percent chance of thunderstorms so we called off the deal and postponed it till next week and uh, you know it rained up until like right now it's probably about three o'clock and it rained up until maybe about an hour ago so i think we made the right choice because even if we would have started later, it would have still been in the rain. So hopefully next week we'll have better weather. But I hate to have all my efforts here go for nothing because I'll probably put some of this back away during the week. You know, some of it I'll have to use, whatever. And I might even drag out more stuff for next week. We'll just see what I get into. But I thought, why not go around and just look at each piece and I'll tell you a little bit about it because people always ask about different stuff that I've got and different implements and things and some of this stuff you haven't seen on here some of it you've seen a little bit some of it you know you see all the time but we'll just walk around my little miniature tractor show here and uh, I'll give you the scoop on what I've got so starting off our lineup here see originally in my mind I had like full line of equipment you know the whole process from plowing to planting to harvesting that didn't really end up panning out as i kept going on it got to be so hot outside and miserable yesterday that i just kind of started dragging stuff out and however it ended up that's what it was but anyway first off in the line my 1755 and you've seen this several times i bought i don't know how long ago now a couple years ago that all kind of blends together finally it was probably about three years ago because i think that's how long i've done youtube videos and this was one of the things that i had just bought and then started doing youtube videos if you recall it's actually in the logo of my youtube channel but it still had a cab on it and then i took the fenders off the 1955 you all remember that there's videos on all that i might be able to link some of these videos in and We've just been making it a little better each time as we progress working on it. You know, there's been lots of videos. There was a fuel pump changing video this spring and uh, pretty nice original tractor. Not a whole lot of hours on it. I believe 2,900 hours, if that is right. Well, I don't know why I walked to this side when the hour meter's on the other side. 2,976 hours. So yeah, not a lot. 1755 like i said you've seen it attached to it is a 374 four row cultivator this is in a video which you may or may not have seen by this point i don't know after watching that oliver guy's video with his ten dollar cultivator i thought you know i've got several cultivators and i've never ever played with them i have never cultivated in my life in quantity i have hooked up cultivators and like i had the mounted cultivator in the 77 and played with it a little bit but not you know go out and in a field and go from one end to the other and tear into it so uh, when i was a kid we did cultivate grandpa had two john deere 
three-point mounted cultivators and we still have the set of cultivators that goes on the two-cylinder John Deere but I never really got in on that he would still cultivate on occasion I don't know why but cultivating was pretty well a thing of the past he had bought a self or a uh, pull type sprayer and he sprayed everything and so I never really got the chance to do this and I wanted to try it out the other day so I got it out there and as you'll see in the video got all the way out there it really ended up it was too wet and then it became obvious that no matter what I did this row would not go through there right and as I discovered nothing was in adjustment I ended up sliding a bunch of stuff over I don't know how much of that made it into the video really uh, by the time you see it because I hack a lot of stuff out but I determined that the tube was evenly spaced and then you know just started from the center and worked out and made sure everything was right and I was right on the money I found I got dug the book out after that video and even found out that I <laughs> came outside and measured this and I got the three-point spacing exactly right it's supposed to be like 32 and 3 8 and it's right on the money and I <laughs> I just guessed I didn't really you know look that up or know anything scientific but i think it has a good chance of working now the only sad thing is i don't think i'm going to get to try it again this year because since then it has rained a bunch so everything has grown and they came and sprayed my corn and i'm not really sure i want to disturb it again and i'm also thinking that the corn is too tall now and i probably won't be able to really do this like i want so that was probably a one and done fail for this year but it's set up for next year so hopefully i can go out and play with it uh in case i can't but 374 cultivator biggest difference you will see when you find one of these is that they have this goofy looking hexagon shaped tube instead of a square bar the earlier 364 had a square solid bar i guess it's solid maybe it's a thing with the end swallowed shut but i think it's a solid square beam uh, i've got one in the shed i'll have to dig out sometime too maybe next year i can have a whole cultivating video and try out different cultivators but they made this up like in the era of the 55 series tractors and then on into the whites because they sold it painted totally red and it was identical except it said white 374 it's got these rolling what they call rolling stabilizers basically a coulter clamped on each end of the bar to help it not go so far into the ground i suppose but 374 cultivator hooked to a 1755 and that is the first thing in my lineup here next in our lineup we have the 880 which came from my pal craig in ohio and this has not been well it was in several videos you saw back when i first got it and got it running and then i hooked it to this planter and fully intended to plant corn with it and then ended up letting my cousin plant it with his rig and so i didn't get to play with it either this year yet or my planter i did however have a little accident while coming out here i ended up hooking a tree limb a tiny little tree limb and broke the top of my marker off so now we're going to get to fix that at some point that really ticked me off that was like yesterday after that i was done and you can see this is the second thing in line so i was done before doing all the rest of this i was just over it because of that that ruined my day but anyway back to this 880 runs pretty good now i mean it runs great the only issue is that stupid carburetor we have had multiple videos on it uh it runs great but it's still i can't get it really to run without having to choke a little bit out but it runs perfect and has great power so it's just that carburetor's garbage so at some point i'm gonna get something different because i don't like that thing it and i have just not had uh a pleasant time together but the tractor is great i love the tractor so it fits right in with my 770 which you'll see down the line but set up the same way is what i like about it it's got the same two weights on the front the stack and the base weight uh and it's got the power booster drive and 
uh, you know, power traction hitch. So it's essentially an exact mate to my 770. And if they're parked side by side, you can't tell the difference because that uh, they're physically the same size tractor. The difference is inside the transmission and engine is larger in the 880, of course. Uh, that is the whole story of why, if you've seen those Miss Green 880s, the whole reason for that paint color even coming into existence was because when they introduced the helical gear transmissions in the 880s, they wanted to make the tractor appear, you know, like it was larger. People couldn't really tell from a distance, a 770 from an 880. Somebody said, hey, lighter color makes things seem larger. So they did a run of Miss Green 880s. I think it was like 249. And then, like, while they were doing that, they went on strike. So then that halted. And by that time, they realized people didn't like it. So when they came back from strike, everything went back to meadow green. And for a long time, it was accepted theory that the 249 serial numbers were the only Miss Green 880s. But recently, one surfaced that uh, I saw it for sale on the Internet, too. And I thought, boy, that looks like a Miss Green 880, but it doesn't fall in the serial number range. And it kind of posed the question, what happened to all the tractors that were on the assembly line the day they went on strike? Well, I believe that they were also Miss Green 880s. They just hadn't gotten finished yet. So when they came back from the strike, they probably finished assembling whatever was on the line. And then the non-Miss Green 880s were the ones that started after that. So it is very theoretically possible that there are a few more Miss Green ones out there, several serial numbers after the uh, range that everybody had always thought because I very much doubt that they were gonna pull everything in and strip it down and repaint it. It would make much more sense to me that they just went ahead and used up what they had and those were Miss Green and then after that, you know, if they didn't, if they had a few miscellaneous pieces, they might have went back and had those repainted or scrapped them and just started with the meadow green ones, however they did it. But I'm sure they did the simplest thing possible. So it is theoretically possible that a few of the tractors after the range could have also been Miss Green because, you know, using up what was on the line. So 880 hooked to a 543 corn planter which was in the video last year, because I planted corn with it. Uh, I like to plant wide row corn so I can play with my toys, mainly, you know. I've got that six row air planter I want to get going and set it up for corn to be able to do no-till corn, mainly away from home here so that I can, uh, you know, just get stuff done. But I'm still always going to plant some wide row corn just so I can play with my stuff because life's too short to just do it for no enjoyment at all. And I like playing with this old stuff. So 543 that was in excellent shape until yesterday when I ripped the marker arm off because I'm an idiot. And I don't know what to say. Just uh, another product of probably the late 60s, early 70s mid 70s uh about the mid 70s is when they came out with the plant air which i have one of those we've talked about before in a video had individual blowers on each unit and then they later on went to like the 5100 which was what i plant soybeans with and then the 6000 series and then 8000 9000 etc like they do today a plate planter uh different than the earlier the one before this like with the 50 series was the 540 this is a 543 and the boxes were a little bit different uh i believe if i remember right the boxes are all painted green uh so you know that might help you distinguish they are differences in the units when you see them side by side you can see uh too hard for me to just explain without having it here to show you but if you look at them side by side, you can tell what you got. Uh, a 543, basically this design stayed until they came out with the 5100. The plant air planters are almost identical in the construction of the units. The frame is the same. Uh, you know, markers, everything is pretty well the same. Just a few improvements. The markers could be electric on the later ones and stuff. And you know, so 543 planter. I've used this for years. It replaced the 494A, 
that was in a video here a while back that I took over to my dad because he wanted to use it to plant sweet corn. Uh, and like I said, I've planted a ton of corn with this and it does great. So 880, 543 planter. Next in our lineup is a tractor that does not belong to me. You recognize this as the 1755 that comes from a customer down the road. It's back here for some more extreme testing because it's still not happy with its hydraulic system. So right now it's doing what it does best, being yard art. So I got it out and hooked it to this uh, field cultivator. I don't know what more I could say about this. I think I've covered it all the videos, but supposedly this was the first 1755 sold in our county. It is in fact a very early one based on the serial number. I really should look that up because it's, I wanna say it's like two, 201 made in that range, like in the 200, I can't remember. But I have had almost every piece of this apart at some point in its life. Uh, it sat in the shed for several years, not used because it had a broken shift rail and transmission. I had the transmission all apart, worked on hydraulics. I've worked on the motor at different times. Just over the years, as it needed stuff, I've worked on it. And just here lately, this hydraulic problem has been persistent. I don't know what its issue is, but it's here now, and it's going to be going through some rigorous testing before they get it back, because I'm determined to figure out what its real problem is. So anyway, it runs excellent, though. And it's on 38-inch rubber with spin-out wheels. Got a lot of hours on it, I'd hate to say. How many? It's got different gauges in it, so it's probably got 20,000 hours. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, fender supposedly came off of a 1950T that he had at one time, and I can't remember if this had a cab on it or if this had fuel tank fenders, and he put those on the T, and then, of course, had these painted and then put the stripes on. But I do know they were 50 series fenders because when I fixed the lights for him last year, the one didn't have a hole in it, and I had to drill the hole. So that all got swapped around. I don't remember what he said, how that was. But I know he had a 1950T at one point, and some of that took place. So if we could get this figured out, you know, the cyst hydraulic system, where it's good and reliable, I think he wants to have it restored and painted up. I know he's really in love with my 1755 and keeps saying he wants to trade, but that's not the same thing as having the tractor you grew up on. So we'll get this straightened out. It's just going to take a little while. But anyway, it is hooked to this 285 pull type field cultivator, which uh, they made as green ones too. You know, this is a later one. They painted it red. It was white motor. But the pole type 285 Olivers were, you know, green meadow and uh, clover white shovels, bracket springs, if that's what I'm trying to... I can't come up with the right words to say, but what I'm saying is the frame was green. These were white. It's just like my... I have the uh, 385. Is that the right number? 385? Yeah, I think so. The three-point version of this I have which is essentially identical, except instead of this framework here, you have your clamps to just hook it right to the tractor. And it's three point. We worked on that one in a video. So this one I haven't ever had out. I've never had this to the field. I bought this. Uh, somebody told me about this. I think it was actually the guy who owned that sick 1650. He said, uh, I don't know, it was a guy who worked for or a guy he knew, I knew the guy too, but I didn't know he had this. But he had quit farming and he was trying to get rid of some of the stuff he still had left. And they, he said he's got this white field cultivator you'd probably be interested in. So I got a hold of him, went out there and looked. It was in a building. And uh, I said, yeah, I do want it. And I don't remember what I gave for it. Very reasonable. And he was happy, I think, that it just didn't go to the scrap, you know. Because, I don't know, there's probably not a lot of demand for one of these, but... I thought it was neat. I bought it with specifically for the reason at that time I did not have uh, my Landall tool and I had been borrowing one of another brand from somebody and it was getting where you couldn't really find parts and I, I didn't really want to, you know, try to keep maintaining something that I couldn't 
fix if I couldn't find the stuff. We I broke something broke on it and I looked and looked and never did find. I had it welded and I guess he's still using it, but I didn't want to tear up something that didn't belong to me and he didn't want to sell that cuz he still used it occasionally, you know, if he had uneven ground or something, he just, you know, I don't blame him. It was paid for, why would you want to sell it? You know, cheaper than trying to buy another one. So anyway, I thought what to do. I'm not going to have any way to level the smooth the ground because that uh, big wing disc, 272 disc that I pull with the Mighty Whitey does a good job except it still leaves a little bit of uh, like on the edges it leaves kind of a groove and and it really isn't quite fine enough as like as what I would like on its own if you pulled a rolling basket behind it it probably honestly would be fine 99 percent of the time but uh, anyway so I thought what am I going to do I don't have anything that would be uh, of a, a big enough size to get stuff done so I did have that 385 uh one of these but it was missing a bunch of those shovels as you recall and i didn't have any way to you know any outlet to find them so this came available and i thought i'll just use this i fixed it up to be ready to go as far as i got a new cylinder for it and uh put on new hoses and whatever and then it was just like later on a few months later i ended up with that landall tool from across the road and uh so I never ended up having to take this to the field. I want to take it out sometime and play with it just to, you know, make sure it's what I need in case I do have to use it and to play with my stuff. But anyway, I think it'll do a good job too if I have to go back to that or if both big tractors break down again like they did once before, I could use this because really even the 1855 is not really big enough to pull that landall tool it will pull it i've had it out there and tried it but you can't get really enough speed it's awfully hard on the tractor and i don't want to do that to it so it would be better to you know it'd be better to just buy another tractor that can pull the landall tool in case you know I, I have a tractor and then i have a backup but you need a backup for your backup so one of these days i'll get a 2255 and then problem solved but anyway that's how this came into my life I'm not really sure here on the folding setup. I believe that these were originally manual fold, maybe, and he had them converted to this hydraulic fold. It's not quite factory, and I don't remember. I looked in the book. I'm not real sure what he had done here. It's obviously the hydraulic part's been welded on, and in order to unfold it, you have to help it. It won't... It can't overcome when it's over center. So you have to come back here with the lever forward and push on it and one side will flip down and then you go to the other side and you push it and it'll flip down. So you gotta be watching what you're doing, but it does work. So, and it's a lot better than trying to do it by hand, but there's the serial number tag, White Farmer Equipment, Oak Brook, Illinois. But yeah, 285 field cultivator which yeah is a comparable thing that you would have got in the 55 series era next super 88 gas 1955 model i bought several years ago on christmas eve i've told that story before it was an auction time and i was almost late for church because i was sitting on the couch trying to get the last bid in and i did and the reason i bought this was because I'm an addict. Well, you know that, but really, I had another Super 88 that is just totally gutted in pieces. I mean, there's pieces, it's basically parts. And I was just getting ready to start putting it back together. I thought I'd like to have a Super 88 uh, when I took those pictures for YouTube that I have like on the home page and whatever. You know, I thought, hey, a Super 88, I'd like to have another one to add to that line. And I was going to start putting that other one together. This one came for sale, and it was so cheap on the auction that the more I looked at it, I thought, it's got four brand new tires on it. It would make sense to, you know, just buy this one that already runs and has brand new tires on it because I will spend a ton of money 
fixing up the other one and then still have to buy new tires and whatever and you know i hadn't seen it in person it was i didn't drive over there and look at it ahead of time and i just bought it and i'm glad i did because it's been an excellent tractor it runs excellent it very obviously came from a guy who cared for it in its lifetime there were three or four other olivers there at the time that very clearly came from the same place they all had new tires on them uh so that old man i'm sure died but he took care of his stuff and and you could tell on like that he had a super 55 as well i bid on it mainly for the tires to put on mine if i got it but i can't remember if it had running issues or what it might have been fine too but it, it was just very obvious he was trying to fix that one up so he he was a guy who cared about it but he just didn't live long enough to see it through so uh i'm glad this came here because it's safe as long as i'm alive i suppose so hopefully you know it's gonna live on and what he didn't finish i hope live accomplished but you've seen many videos on it as well new radiator last year i put the belt pulley on it was didn't have the pulley itself but it has the unit in it was already in there uh yeah i put the wheel weights on we've talked about that before new lights just different things i gotta put the seat together right it's backwards the uh i can't remember how it is seat rubbers are upside down in this one which is strange because it's the same way like in the 880 that are not right in that one either so we're gonna have to work on more seats one day when we got nothing else to do but as long as they hold me up in the air i'm cool with it but super 88 gas works great its job is bush hogging with the woods mower c114 which we're gonna have to do some work on pretty soon because i pretty well clapped it out it needs new belts in the worst way uh but we're not even gonna look at that that's not important super 88 runs great next in our line 1550 gas i've had this for i don't know four or five years maybe at this point another one i bought non-running it had water in the oil when i got it it had huge wide uh 14 inch tires on it i think they actually ended up on that uh 1650 creeper drive i think is where i put them on i don't remember but anyway i got these narrower rims and put on this one with the correct size tires again which i think are 616s and this tractor belonged to a friend of mine he had traded well i guess i don't know how you want to put that story but he had bought the tractor from the original owner's family it was sitting in the shed non-running had water in the oil there were several other tractors there this guy bought it the guy that bought it was actually the guy who i got all those parts from a while back and he had it in his building and he was going to tinker with it in the meanwhile he had a little ford front wheel assist tractor and the front end was way messed up on it it needed a lot of attention uh bushings put in it and different stuff and so he called me if i'd come work on it i came work on it when i saw this i said when we're done i said i'm taking this as payment i said we'll work out whatever the difference is and whichever one of us owes the other one money fine but i said i'm i'm taking the tractor is what i want so uh he delivered it here for me and uh, like i said it was non-running one thing i thought was interesting about it is it was ordered with the three-point claw delete which is an option in the parts book this supposedly was probably cheaper it also has pressed steel rear wheels and a set of wheel weights which was probably also cheaper maybe than the cast center rims and old german people liked a good deal so i would say that he ordered it uh cheapened down a little bit it does have a hydropower though which he could have saved money on that but you know they had a 1650 as well so maybe he got used to that and when he bought this he wanted you know i don't know but anyway it lived its life on a dairy farm it survived in kind of miraculous shape for the way a lot of dairy farm tractors are you know you know what i'm saying they get used every day that's why they just they're usually in rougher shape off of a dairy farm because they just use the heck out of them because they have so much work to do feeding every day whatever uh i don't remember what he said the 
I talked to the would be the original owner's nephew or great nephew and he said it just did a whole bunch of different jobs around the farm hay jobs it, it would do some feed wagon duty but it was kind of too small for that uh, this tractor I fixed with the miracle cure in a can I just uh, got some of the good stuff and poured it in there and got it running or got it running first and then poured that in and it, it seems to be working fine uh, so you see it all the time I mow the ditches with it it was just in a video the other day the only thing that really gets me about it I don't know why he did this he cut a hole in the hood around the radiator cap looks like he put a new radiator in all you got to do is take the cap off and you could get that through there maybe it just didn't line up to suit him and he I don't know people do strange things but uh I should probably really try to sand on that and see if I could bring that paint better around. I probably could if I just took the time to do it one of these days. 351, no, 356 mower. You see that all the time too. Uh, used it the other day to mow the ditches. The difference between a 356 and a 351, 351 had the belt drive head. I'd like to find one of those because those are the ones that you're, you can mow super fast with. Uh, quieter to uh, the old mower is pretty rough don't kid yourself uh, somebody commented on it one of the videos the welding on it uh, it has definitely been broken in its life something's been done to it there something major has been done to it here I don't know if it broke completely off or if they saw it cracking and they started in on it or what it does not I cannot get enough adjustment to get it what it needs to be you couldn't really cut hay with it because it just won't i got to do a lot of cutting and welding if i want that to happen so when somebody said hey you didn't uh, have enough lead on the cutter bar you're right because it's pretty well maxed out and i can't get any more lead on the cutter bar i think maybe if i tighten this back up i might get a little looks like it's coming loose but anyway you're right about that it's not set right for what it should be it needs more lead in on the cutter bar so that when you mow it's 90 degrees but it does work good enough to cut the ditches we'll keep improving it as we need to it's not a big priority because you know it's not cutting hay every day it's mainly just ditch mowing and something to do to play with our tractor so yeah 1550 356 mower next is our little Fiat friend, the 1365 and the 107 hay rig. No, not 107, 105. See, I'm even forgetting what this stuff is out here. Yeah, I don't really need to talk a whole lot about this because we've discussed it in recent times, many, many times. So we'll just leave it at that. Another local tractor, you know that story. Uh, another dairy farm pretty well sacked out and just got it going this winter and it's a handy little farm so 1365 105 rake we did work on it this spring or whenever that was and we're going to be doing tire work again because that tire keeps going flat now for some reason but it worked great in this very field where we're standing now is where it raked hay and did a lot better than last year so 1365 105 rake next 550 you've seen this a bunch too 59a loader 59a loader was different than the model 59 which i have one of those as well i think i'm i think i'm right on that i might not be i'll have to look it up again but the 59a pipe frame and all this and that and i think the 59 is that one i have where it's like a ch uh, it's almost like an i-beam bent frame and you know the arm it just it kind of looks like this but it's made out of i-beams bent all up and so this one is fully hydraulic which is another nice thing about it uh two-way bucket one-way boom cylinders but it is an awful handy little feller uh, it came from downtown Indianapolis in a suburb and supposedly the guy had brought it with him. He lived in Ohio. It had belonged to his dad. 
but when I got the build card, the tractor was sold new in Canada. It says Goodison on the build card, and so how it made its journey down here, one will never know, but you see it a lot because I use it all the time. It's a handy little thing with that loader. Its primary job, I would say at this point, is I use it maintaining fences. I, you know, got my toolbox mounted to the loader frame that has all the fence supplies and stuff in it and use it to run around like a little four-wheeler and fix fence. I can carry whatever I need with me. So, handy little tractor, 550, uh, earlier 550 because of the decals with the oval and the stripe. So, it fits in like with my 770 and 880. But, 550. Here's something you have not seen, probably on film before, and I wish I had kept it in better shape. I had it all painted up at once, and then the weather has, you know, stuff just sits outside sometimes, and this shouldn't have been one of them. It's a 37 hay crimper. It does, in fact, work. I've used it. Uh, my tire self-destructed, though. That was a bummer. So, I'm gonna have to find me a new 14-inch tire. The biggest downfall of this was it was metal on metal rolls. If you don't have them adjusted right, they're super loud and they clang and whatnot. But the biggest issue I found with running it is if you get into grass hay that's really tall and you try to run through it or whatever, it'll start wrapping on those rolls and you got a mess on your hand. You spend more time cutting off stuff than uh, you know that it's worth. So. It works really great on alfalfa, clover hay, that type of stuff. Uh, I don't know what else to say about it. It uh, came from an auction when I was a little kid. I think I gave five bucks for it. Nobody wanted it. Grandpa said, you want that thing? Why? And I'm glad I did because I think a lot of these got scrapped. Nobody liked this. The later ones had one rubber roll, one metal roll, which worked a lot better. Uh, I also have a 415 pull type mower and it's got the hitch on the back and the last time I had this to the fair I had them hooked together and that is where I learned you have to have the wheel weight on the mower if you go down a hill in road gear with this hook behind it because that mower will start fishtailing to the point that stuff is about to come loose. So yeah, take it slow when you go down a hill if you got this rig hooked up. Next we have our 60 on steel. And hooked to it, we have our 134 plow. I need to go around and start cutting off the auction time stickers on the stuff. That stuff seems to hang on here an awfully lot. And anyway, I don't know what else to say about this. We've talked about it in recent times. Got our hitch put on from the viewer. This is the first time it's ever been hooked up, so that works pretty sweet. Thank you again. I hope you're enjoying your shirts. I traded him some merch for it. That's what he wanted, and it really makes this work great. So, thanks again. Next, we have the 500, which you've seen a million times lately. So, nothing really more to add to that. And it's still hooked to the... Uh... Oh, now I can't remember my name. 372 uh, Cultivator which was, this is the way I had it at that show in town. It hasn't ever been unhooked yet, so I just drove it out here, and I'd like to fix up this cultivator someday to get some color on it. I did notice after washing it to take it to that show, you can still see the remnants of the, the decal on it. This would have been more from the era of like the Super 55. Uh, one thing I wanted to do at one time is try to get the full line of little implements that go with the Super 55. So I've got a 330 disc. I've got this 372 cultivator. I've got uh, the Dan User blade that would have been with it. Uh, I don't know what else, but you get what I'm saying. So another thing we may play with in the future or work on, but still hooked to the 500. And I don't know that you really see a lot of those around in your travels, but uh, pretty simple construction when you look at it piece of channel iron with just a bunch of stuff bolted to it so they didn't spend a lot on tooling for something like this and that passed the savings on I'm sure to the customer so good deal this cultivator came from maybe about 
I don't know, half an hour away or so. I saw it listed on one of the internet things. No name, just two row cultivator. I recognized it from the frame of what it was. I said, does it have a tag on it? And if so, can you send me a picture of it? I just wanted to make sure he sent me the picture. It's what I wanted. So we drove over there one night about, you know, five o'clock ish and, you know, set it on the trailer and here it is. Next, we have the 770 power traction hitch, power booster drive, uh, front weights. You've seen it a bunch too. Not much more I can say about it. It's the first thing I bought after the uh, virus time where everybody was at home and not able to go anywhere. And I saw this listed and I thought I'm buying that thing because I'm sick of being cooped up at home. And I haven't bought any tractors lately through this whole thing. So a super good purchase because I don't think I gave but $800 for it and it runs perfect i think it's been overhauled i think the old man had got that far in the process i had to put two new tires on the back one new rim the other rim i fixed from cutting up the two rims and making one uh, i should have probably just bought two new rims but whatever the tires since you still couldn't really get stuff i bought off of the electronic bay they came here on a truck tires and tubes they unloaded them right down there at the end of my driveway i said just roll them off the truck and then i rolled them or took the loader and the hay spear and carried them back here put that on uh it's just been a good tractor that was a good buy and loaded with options you know power booster power traction hitch uh, yeah it's just another one where a guy cared about it and he wanted to make it something and he didn't live long enough to fulfill his dream so hopefully you know i've taken it over the edge for him but it's pretty pretty good old tractor and then we have our 107 rake which i use all the time i didn't use it out here this year dad borrowed it and used it his hay rake somehow self-destructed so we're gonna have to figure out what's up with that but uh I bought this off the electronic bay a long time ago, probably 20 years ago. I think I was still in high school maybe. It was up in northern Indiana. I did not win the auction. I want to say the auction was $300, which I, at the time you could not find an Oliver hay rake for you know, anything less than 600 bucks or so. I thought it was a good deal. All the bars were loose. It said it had a bearing out. I thought, what in the world, you know, it's who knows what i didn't win the auction i got a second chance offer and usually that turns out to be scams but in this case it wasn't the other buyer backed out so dad and i drove up there to get it super sketchy place down a road where we could not turn around ended up having to back out i believe they came out set this on here and what it ended up was that the bearings were out of these main wheels here and easy to get they were just tapered roller bearings. The only difference was the back one has a rubber shield on one side. The only other thing I did to it, putting it back together, is drill and tap each bar for grease fitting. So hopefully these will last a long time. I try to make sure it gets greased absolutely every time before use because those are kind of hard to find. So it does work. It obviously is not as good as an offset axle rake, which is why everybody went to that design. When you get in thick stuff, it does have the tendency to slide the wheels. Uh, the long drive shaft is also not that desirable in my opinion, the way it is, but it, it works. And uh, yeah, I had it all fixed up too, but stuff happens and it's ready to be fixed up another time, I think. I think that one batch of paint I had at one point just didn't hold up very good over time even when this stuff was sitting in the shed part of the time it just i don't know it just didn't stick good so one of these days we'll clean it up again uh i went through the whole thing when i first fixed it up all new teeth the whole works i still have several teeth left uh the thing about these side delivery rakes guys if you set the rake right you don't break off teeth you don't have to gouge the dirt you're just trying to gently brush the material that's probably the biggest killer of teeth and you'll drive by hay fields and see guys and you see the dirt flinging up in the air from the teeth digging into the ground you don't need that if you do it the right way you very very seldom lose a tooth so 
I think in all those years of using it, like I said, it's probably been 15 years or more, I see one missing tooth. And <clears throat> let's have a look and see if it's it was probably an original tooth. Yep, I did not ha ever have that one off, so it was still an old tooth that broke off. But that's pretty darn good for that amount of time not losing teeth so you can take my advice or not but set your rake accordingly next 66 row crop has not been in many videos it was in a video where i sowed wheat i pulled a wagon out with it i want to pull the head off of this one and double check everything over i've got a new head gasket and whatnot for it it runs hot and it is very obvious that the head gasket is an issue because somebody has had it apart at one point and it looks like it is slathered up with goop so i'm not sure what they were thinking the tractor runs super sweet but there's obviously a head gasket issue so we'll pull that off here one of these days maybe now before putting it in the shed we'll work on that and try to get that fella brought back around because it'll be super handy for little jobs and whatnot. But I had searched many years to find a 66 to complete my Three Beauties collection. And specifically, the reason is I wanted the full frame stripe. So an earlier model, like to match my other two. And I finally found this one from a buddy over maybe about 45 minutes away or so. And we ended up trading I can't remember what we all traded. We traded a whole bunch of stuff back and forth. He had it. I didn't really have the money to spend on a toy that he wanted for it. He had just put new Firestone rear tires on it, which was the, the thing that was killing the price. You know, he had to have his money back for the tires. I don't blame him. He had painted the tractor, uh, minus the side curtains were not painted. They're kind of rough, but I painted them up anyway and stuck them on there. Um, Anyway, I had taken in on trade an MT John Deere, and I don't know. So that was one of the things I traded, plus a garden tractor, I think, and then some cash for the tires, I think, or something. But anyway, I'm glad I made that trade. This is a nice little tractor. I just need to get it polished up so that it's totally usable. Uh, I made some changes. I put on original style lights. I put on hazard flasher like I do to all of them. New gauges of better quality. Uh, stuff it didn't have to have, but stuff that I did to make it match my other two. It still needs the seat rebuilt. I've got a kit for that. Just haven't had time. So we may throw this into something that we work on pretty soon to get all that done. Uh, he had just put the tires on, but I could tell that the rims were rusty because they had not fully seated on the bead and I could see down in there. So I went ahead and took the tires back off, cleaned up the rims, painted them, remounted the tires. And uh, yeah, it's been to the fair a couple times. It's done different stuff, but just nothing. The gas tank leaked at the fair one time right after I got it. So I got a different tank, just little things I've done to it. Uh, so you'll see it again in the future hook to it we have our number two subsoiler i have never had video of this working but i have in fact used it on this very field and it was fun to play with uh, yeah i don't i don't think the 66 would pull it in this clay i had the super 88 hooked to it and it would make that thing bark so yeah this clay is kind of heavy I did learn some things, like, for instance, make sure that your bolt here that the previous owner put in is in fact tight, because what happened is it vibrated loose for me, and it let the thing bury itself all the way to the frame in the ground, and I had her hooked in the earth, I'm telling you. I had to hook to it backwards and pull it and get it and everything else to pull it back out of the ground. Finally figured out what was going on. Uh, basically what it does when it's in the ground, it rides on these rollers. They hit there and then that sets your depth of how far it goes you turn the crank basically made out of 100 plowmaster parts as many of the plow parts as they could use to make it you can see you know the hitch is kind of the same as like the 4340 plow crank assembly i would say is almost identical to the plow other than maybe the length i don't know the wheel lift 
they were not in the habit of retooling up for something if they could recycle stuff that they already made which is nice for restoring things because you have choices for parts availability it does not have the original rims on it somebody cut the center out and welded in something else and i don't like my i don't like those tires they need to be bigger uh i got a good deal on this lug tire so i bought it and then it didn't look right with the other one and i had that other tire so they are mates but i think they look too skinny but it does work and one of these days we'll take it out and play with it number two subsoiler all right out here i'm getting hot out here in the sun out here we have my 77 you've seen before hook to number 64 grain drill there was a video using this exact rig planting wheat the last time i planted wheat i don't know what more to say about it uh, other than we need to work on the drill a little bit uh, i noticed in that wheat planting video that it just wasn't quite right consequently that video did not get a lot of views and i think the reason why is I was still learning how to publish videos uh, like live or different, you know, delayed posting on its own. And like two or three of them ended up getting posted the same day. And that one just didn't do very well. So I might throw a link in here, go up and watch that. Maybe help it out. Maybe it'll get some more views now. But yeah, I could see in the video that the clutch wasn't latched and it was or something was happening in there i could see wasn't right i don't remember what it was so we'll work on that one of these days the drill came from just around the corner when i was a kid neighbor had an auction he had this drill i wanted it because like oliver's my dad said why would you buy that you know that's a waste of money don't throw your money away and from that day on we used this we never used our other drill so it turned out that it wasn't such a waste of money because we did in fact use it and it's what i still use now grandpa had a big international drill i want to get it out one day and play with it too because i always heard that great grandpa bought it new and he drove to illinois and pulled it home so i i got it in the shed i want to get it out and play with it i've got several grain drills i've got this is a 64 I've got another 64 for parts. I've got two 26 drills, a low wheel and a high wheel. I've got a 76. Uh, I've never had any of them to the field but this one. So we need to play with them. And, you know, that's a project for another day. There's a lot of variation in these drills. I don't really know what the uh, answer is to that. This is an earlier one that would have come out like with the Super Series, would have had green wheels. Uh, I painted it with cheapo paint to kind of preserve it way back when. It had Oliver Superior on it in yellow letters with the stripes. So that's the air it was. Some of these later ones had white letters with red outline, which would, I would assume would be from like the three digit era. And some of them also had embossed in the lid that said Oliver. And I never have figured out what, you know, whether those came after this or whether the white letter plain lids came next or what. I don't know. But there are some variation in them, but they're all 64 drills. There was a 54 drill, I believe, just before this. And the difference with it was it did not have a sealed gearbox. It was open gears. And I have never seen one of those in person. So I don't know if they weren't a lot of them made or there just weren't a lot around this area. But either way, this is a 64 grain drill. Next, we have my 1650 diesel loader tractor. 1610 loader yeah you've seen it a bunch i use it every day it's yeah it feeds feed tractor feeds hay whatever so uh i've told that story many times too so there's not much more to say about it uh it's hooked to the 546 plow that i got a year ago or so and it's still not quite right i still need to play with the adjustment i think i've had it adjusted in every hole and never did get it like i want it the only thing i want to try now is i'm going to try raising this hitch up a little bit because i don't think that it is quite right although it does look like it's all the way uh let's see what am i trying to say if i want it to go down more 
I need to take this up a set of holes because I don't want it to go down more. I want the plow to stay up higher. That's what I think its issue still is, is that the front is going down too far, causing the bottom to ride out of the, or the back to ride out of the ground. And hooking it up even to this tractor last night, I think that is the case because the links wouldn't go underneath. So I'm gonna try to, but I think that would make that part worse. I don't know. I've had it, I took it here that one day and went out and made a lap and adjusted and came back and made a lap, adjusted and never did get it to suit me. One of these days, we'll get time to play with plows again and figure out what this thing's problem is, but pretty nice original plow. Good thing it's not in the scrapyard. Here's my little Ford Jubilee. You've seen it before. Great grandpa gave it to me when he thought he was dying. It is in fact the first tractor I ever owned, I believe. Uh, and I did not expect that he was gonna give it to me. He just, he thought he was dying one day. He was in the hospital. He called me and he pulled me in close to him and he was kind of had tears in his eyes and he said, that old tractor's yours. So I was in high heaven there with a brand new Ford tractor that didn't hardly run and in pretty rough shape. So he ended up living uh, like probably two years after that. So he did get to see me fix it up and play with it a little bit before he went. So I think he was happy about his decision, but uh it's another one that gets used almost every day right now i use it to do fence line spraying and different things i need to do a better cosmetic restoration on it because the little thing just i don't know it's had a hard life getting used every day and for this video i pull it out here we're gonna have to work on the steering box now because it started that yesterday it does not want to turn left easy so so anyway, we'll have to tear into this and see what's going on. If I had to guess, the way it feels is probably one of the rollers has dropped out of the cage of a bearing and it's wedged in there and it's not letting it. You can turn it, but it's a lot of work. So we'll have to fix that because another one that gets used almost every day. 53 Ford Jubilee. The only year they were called a Golden Jubilee was 1953. And it says that on the emblem. After that year, it was known as the Model NAA, and it did not have that special emblem. Next, 2020 John Deere. You know the story on this. Does not really uh, go with maybe the theme of the rest of my collection, but it is a tractor that will never leave here as long as I'm around because Grandpa bought it new and it has only lived on this farm. It was delivered here brand new and it'll be here till I'm gone. And I've spent a ton of money on it in the last few years getting it in more usable condition because it was pretty well sacked out. I don't think it was built very well from the beginning anyway. And then the life that it led here was pretty darn rough as a loader tractor. It did absolutely everything from manure handling to feeding to filling the bucket with water and watering hogs. It was a logging tractor, cut down trees, push over trees, dig holes, brush, anything imaginable. And in the early days, before he had the 1650, he farmed with it too. So it uh, has lived a rough life. So I recently, or this winter, started working on the lights, trying to get them to work. They've never worked in my lifetime. And then I kind of got where the fenders are rotted out and I don't know. We'll just figure out what we're going to do. But you've seen it in several videos. Kind of an odd model because not a lot of people kept them. Like I said, I don't think they were just the best from day one. Uh, a lot of things on it just are not built heavy enough for what they're trying to do. So that was his biggest flaw. But Grandpa loved this thing. Uh, it was his go-to tractor. And I use it every day. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It gets used almost every day. The Ford the little 550 uh 1650 diesel all those tractors at some point in the day i probably grab it and do something with it you know I, it always amazes me when you talk to these different farmers and they're like well i went on vacation for two weeks down to the bahamas or what how how do you do that because there is something here to do every day like i still don't get everything done and i never go anywhere so 
what I'm saying is when you live on a farm, there's a never ending list of things to do. So yeah, I use tractors every day and multiple tractors every day for different things. And this is one of them. It gets used all the time. So uh, 2020 John Deere with a 37 loader. Next up in our affair here is the 7300 combine, which I need to do another video on it. Uh, I was going to try to do that for this and didn't get it done. I've got some secret footage that I want to throw into a video about combines that's been sitting in the wings for a good while. So I'll get recording on that one of these days and uh, we'll throw that in. But you've seen a lot of footage on this. I mean, going down there to get it revived and then bringing it home and uh, I really wanted to harvest with it maybe this fall a little bit, but it won't be with this head because this is not set up on 30 inch rows. It's on 36s, I believe. I think it is possible to narrow it down. Uh, it might be on 32, I can't remember. I'll have to measure again. But it's gonna take a lot of doing to slide her in that far. And you know, is it worth it? I don't know. Uh, I have a four row head that'll go right on here in the shed. Green even, that style latch. So it should be just a matter of getting it out of there. There's a snake, that caught my attention. Uh, anyway, if we do come on with it, it'll be with that four row head. And I'll try to get on the ball with that. And I wanna get my 545 going and try that again. So yeah, come mines will be in the future videos for the fall, I hope. But 7,300 come mine. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I bought that too because it was headed for the scrap yard. And that is too nice of a machine to scrap. So here it is. Next we have our corn picking rig. The uh, 5026A wagon gear, 5170 grain box, the number five full type picker, and our good old faithful 1650. <laughs> I didn't even hook the power tank up off. This is just for display for this, pulling all this out of the shed. So uh, I think you've seen all this multiple times. I think that's even what I used to pick with this last fall, just like this, other than maybe a different wagon. But uh, yeah, that's what you would have got if you went to the dealer and said, give me all the stuff you would have got a rig very similar to this and I think that's pretty neat so kind of my theme with pulling stuff out here was to hook to things that maybe you don't see everywhere you know at every single show so just kind of a variety of different things so that's why there's no real rhyme or reason to what I brought out here but anyway I think I've talked about that enough in multiple videos so We'll leave it at that. And same way with this, we have our 88 Oliver hooked to our Minneapolis Moline 88 Harvest Store. Yes, it is spelled with an O-R. Somebody commented on my videos that I didn't know how to spell, but if you look at the Minneapolis Moline book, it is Harvest Store, S-T-O-R. And that is what they called it. And it is fresh back from the video harvesting and so hopefully we'll get back to it one of these days finishing fixing it up a little bit better uh, I want to stencil those boards on the reel uh, see how much more we can get painted I have painted a little more since the harvesting video uh, but there's still oh so much more to do and so that's in the works it's just as I get time for it and as the weather is permitting. So that's kind of how that's going to be for now. I think that about does it for my mini tractor show here, but I hope this was worth watching. Like I said, a lot of this stuff you've probably seen before, but uh, I don't know. It takes a lot to impress me at a show because I can put on my own show. <laughs> it's, I go to a lot of shows and I'm like, oh, that was it because I got more than that at home. So I get the most enjoyment probably out of getting the stuff back to working condition. 
and then just owning it. I don't need to take it anywhere to enjoy it. I enjoy having it here. I can walk out and look at it. So hopefully you got something out of that too. And tell a little more story of different stuff. And I'm going to go back and try to link in the different sections the videos maybe that go with each piece so you can see them in the field if I've used them on YouTube in the field. But uh, yeah, there you have it. I think that'll do it for this one. As always, if you enjoy these videos, give me a thumbs up. That doesn't cost you anything and it's supposed to help me out. So do that. Leave a comment. Tell me if you like it or don't like it or what you want to see next. Maybe a specific piece of equipment. Uh, but whatever. Leave your comments. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.